Why is it so heavy? <gasps> I didn't drop them. Oh my god, I think this is the first video taking a thumbnail with so many books in my hand that I did not drop them. Round of applause for me. Thank you. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to August, re nope, always do this. Welcome to my July reading wrap up. I cannot believe, I say this every time I start one of these videos, I'm pretty sure. I cannot believe that it is the end of July. I cannot believe that we are in August. <laughs> Genuinely, where has the summer gone? I do not understand how it's August and in a few weeks we are going to be going into the fall season. Like it's blowing my mind how summer goes so quick and I think it's because summer is just fun. You know, we're not gonna get into the seasons, but we are gonna get into all of the books that I read in July. Obviously, we're gonna go through what they're about, my rating, my review, what I thought about them, if I recommend them. You guys know how this goes. So I read a total of 17 books in the month of July. Romance, fantasy, thrillers, dystopian. I have all of these genres here to talk to you guys about. I have, I don't know if I have any five stars. I don't think I do, which was a bummer, but I do have ranging from, I think three is the lowest, which is, a thumbs up to I think like some 4.5s. So we have some good some good books in here. Before we do, I do want to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Thank you so much, Book of the Month, for sponsoring today's video. You guys know how much I love Book of the Month. They are a super popular and fast-growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers like us find books that they love. Their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives their readers a choice from a curated selection of new and early release titles, which is so amazing because it gives us more time to read and less time to research. One of the best parts is they are risk-free. You can skip any time, any month. You will not be charged. Plus, Plus they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. You can get your first book for just $9.99 with my code Sarah Caroli. All that information will be in the description. Now into the books that I got for this month. So you get this wonderful blue box that shows up at your door and in here is the book that I got. None of this is true. Lisa Jewell's new release. I love Lisa Jewell's writing so much. I was so excited to see this as one of the options this month. This one is about a famous podcaster that interviews a stranger when they bump into each other a few times and the stranger's secrets are revealed throughout and the main character gets it's tangled up in all of these secrets. So that is this one. I'm so excited to read this. I, again, love her writing. And then I got another mystery book. This is called Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. So her father and her brother don't return from a walk and she gets a little suspicious, but then her brother comes back all battered and bruised and she's like, what's going on? And it says that the father in this tight-knit family is missing and the only witness is Eugene who has a rare genetic condition and cannot speak. This one sounds very, very interesting. Again, these are the two books that I picked. If you are interested in Book of the Month, you guys can go to bookofthemonth.com and use my code Sarah Crowley for your first book, just $9.99. Again, that's all in the description for you guys. Always when starting these videos, I actually forget about the books that I read at the beginning of the month and it just becomes such a blur that I just don't remember anything. So just stick with me here. But the first book I finished in July was Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. This was her newest release. And I was honestly a little skeptical to read this one at first, like before I saw any reviews of it because I feel like her other books aren't similar, but I didn't know if I was in the mood or I wanted to read another STEM romance. But after seeing such good reviews and people raving about this book, I was so excited to read it. After reading this, I was obsessed with it. I gave this 4.25 stars. It was just such an amazing read. What I love about Allie Hazelwood's characters and especially her main female characters is that they have such a personality. Like I feel like they are so unique and different from each other. And I just really feel like I know them when I'm in their head and they don't feel like one dimensional. Like they feel like real people and they're just so entertaining and so interesting to see their point of views. This is about Elsie who's an adjunct professor and she doesn't make a lot of money. So she has another job on this app where she kind of fake dates people, which is very interesting. So one of her clients, she works with multiple times and the brother of her client that she's with a lot, Jack, is the main male character. So you have her fake dating this guy on an app in front of his family, but the interest is his brother, which was very interesting. I've never read a book like that. And Jack actually rules over the physics department at MIT, kind of standing between Elsie and her dream job. So there's kind of like this animosity there. I will say that this had a lot of like science politics within this, but I also want to say that it wasn't difficult to understand, but it was a little bit too heavy for me on the science. And I know that's what I was going to get while going into this, but I didn't absolutely love love it. It was easy to understand and I got the difference between the type of physics people that the two main characters are because they're in different fields. I think one's theoretical and one's experimental and they kind of have a little feud going on between the two of them. So I understood it, but I just didn't absolutely love it. And Elsie's this character who whoever she's in front of, she kind of plays a different personality in front of them because they kind of people please them. But when Jack is around her, like he reads her so well and she doesn't have to kind of like form a different personality in front of him. And it was so amazing how he could read her. I absolutely loved Jack. It wasn't a five-star read, didn't get a five-star feeling. There were a few things 
things in here that I didn't absolutely love, but it was a really amazing read, one of my favorites by Allie Hazelwood. Then I read Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney. I won this for her giveaway. It's a signed arc. Literally was so excited to read this. And I also gave this 4.25 stars. So this is told in a few point of views, and it's basically about this woman who was in a supermarket with her baby in a stroller, and she turns around for a second, she turns back around to the stroller, and her baby's gone. But now it's present day, 20 years later, and you get another point of view of this woman who is in a nursing home. Her daughter put her in there, and her only companion is one of the maid's patients. And you get all their point of views, and they kind of all, not connect, but you're trying to see how they intertwine and how they connect between each other. All three of them are kind of thrown into the same mystery, but like in different point of views within it. And it's very interesting, and I thought I had the whole thing figured out, and I thought that I understood and kind of like connected the pieces, because as it was reading, it was kind of flowing into what the ending was, but then there's a little plot twist that I did not see coming. And I just love Alice Feeney's writing. I just didn't want to put this down. Her writing to me flows really well, and even if it like slows down a little bit, I still want to know what happens. This one was a little bit slow in the middle of it, but I was just like, I wanted to know what was going to happen. I didn't know that there was going to be a plot twist too, which I was like a little bummed about, but then she got me. She always gets me. She knows exactly how to pull a plot twist out, and it's just like, it was so good. And then I read Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I actually tried to read this. I don't remember when, but I actually DNF'd it halfway through, but I decided to give it another chance, and I am so happy I did. I think I understood Emily Henry's writing at this point. I think after reading all of her books, you kind of understand how she creates characters and worlds and like the depth between the characters, and I feel like I said this in the video where I read this. If you can't connect to one of her characters or all of her characters or the story or anything, I feel like her writing feels very boring and very bland, but once you can connect to the story, connect to the characters, and like kind of understand them a little more, you're just like really invested in her writing just becomes this beautiful thing. So I gave this four stars. It's not my favorite Emily Henry book, but I absolutely loved it. I will say the beginning is a little bit slow. She's kind of like prepping the story and like building the story to where it's gonna go, and I really appreciated the way that she did that the second time around. So if you DNF this, like I didn't just thought it was really boring, I do think you should give it another chance. Maybe try it if you, if you want to. But if you don't know what Book Lovers is about, it's about Nora, who's this literary agent, and she meets with Charlie, who is a pup. No, he's an editor. And they meet in like the prologue, I think it is, or like the very beginning. And she is pitching her client's book to him. And he's like, no. And they kind of have this little tiff between each other. And then it's present day. Her client writes in this like small town, really happy world in her books. And Nora's sister is obsessed with that small town. So she's like, let's take a trip there. Let's spend however many weeks there. Let's get away from this life because Nora's a city girl. She loves the city. So they take a vacation there. They take a trip there and she bumps into Charlie. But it kind of reads more of a literary fiction book. It doesn't really read as a romance just yet. You kind of get more of Libby and Nora's relationship and the relationships between all of them. I feel like she does such a good job, Emily Henry, of writing relationships between so many different people, so many different things. Once you get into Charlie and Nora's story, like deeper into the story, their banter, this is the best banter in any of her books. Like it's just so good. I don't know how she does it. I absolutely loved it. I will say it was slower for me. Like this isn't one that I binged really. I think it took me a little bit longer to get through, but I loved the writing. I loved the story. I loved the way it ended. It kind of went full circle. And also in the beginning, she was saying how like in normal small town romances, like you get the main character who goes to a small town and she stays there. She realizes that that's where she's meant to be, but that's not Nora. Nora is this shark character and she loves the city and she's like this cutthroat literary agent and that's just how Nora is and she's not really changing herself, but it was really good. I really loved this book. I think if you want to give it a second chance, I, I highly recommend doing so. It was really, really, really good. And then I read The Atlas Six by Olive e. Blake. This one is a modern day fantasy about six of the most talented magicians around like the whole entire world. They are chosen to go to the secret society kind of schooling to study upon things within the schooling and by the end of it only five get to enter the schooling like you kind of have to almost compete to get in so all six of these characters or all six of these magician people have different magic abilities and that's why they're chosen they have different skills and skill sets you get all their point of views and one thing I love about Olive Blake is how she creates characters she doesn't like go right in and give you a background of the characters no she throws you right into the story and you kind of grow and realize how these characters are without her straight up telling you like word for word and you kind of grow attached to them in that way and I love the way she creates a story and characters and her writing it's just like I've never read any other writing kind of like hers like it's just so unique in her own way and all of her stories are so different this one I ended up giving 3.75 I will say it was really entertaining like I wanted to know where it was going to go and how these characters were going to connect with each other and form alliances or form differences and like enemies whatever like all the dynamics of them are so different but them together was such an amazing kind of like almost found family like this found family reminds me so much of Six of Crows found family which is my favorite one ever because all of them are so different but when they come together and they kind of like grow with each other almost you can see how they interact with each other it's just so fun I did give it 3.75 because I liked the premise of the story but when
when you got into like the politics of the magic i got a little lost i feel like she got a little bit too in depth and a little too scientific for me like i literally just did not understand anything that she was saying at some points and it got a little bit slow in the middle of it but i loved the ending i loved the way it was set up i loved the basis of this story but some parts fell flat or i just got confused i will say i want to read the atlas paradox which is the one after this so don't know when that will be but i definitely want to continue this story i loved these characters okay and then i read belladonna by adeline grace this one i was so excited to read because i've heard absolutely nothing but good things like i was told if you like once upon a broken heart jacks if you like wrath from kingdom of the wicked like this main character romantic interest gives those vibes so obviously i'm ready to eat it up it fell flat for me and i was so upset while reading it that it did fall flat this is about signa and everywhere she goes starting from when she's a baby growing up like people around her are dying so people think she's like cursed and she can't go around people or they're gonna die and whatever so at one point her i forget who she's like being taken care of i think it's her aunt i don't know who it is but she passes away and signa is taken away to her uncle's house i think and her uncle has a lot of money they live in a mansion this huge setting of like lots of land mansion type feel and when she's there she discovers something within that family her family that's like a little bit iffy a little bit weird and wrong she kind of has to go through a little bit of a mystery while she's there so death follows her around but death is an actual like person almost like a shadow within it like death has his own character and like speaks and stuff like it's legit a character in the story within the whole story like you're going along the mystery and the mystery was very entertaining for me i was very intrigued with it it was very like paranormal-esque almost and i really enjoyed the mystery part the romance fell so flat for me and i was so excited to read about this romance i just could not grasp the concept of of death as a romantic interest it just did not hit for me and like right off the bat i feel like the writing was a little bit surface level like i wanted to go deeper i wanted to have more depth to it like i feel like it was a little bit too on the top level do you know what i mean i don't know i ended up giving this 3.5 stars it wasn't bad it was very entertaining loved the way it ended and i feel like it didn't flow too well for me like i feel like it didn't connect the dot there was another little surprise not plot twist maybe it's a plot twist but i guess it within the first like 60 pages so that was a little bit of a bummer i just didn't connect with it i think as i wanted to and i thought i was going to it was mid but it wasn't bad it just didn't hit like i thought it was going to okay and then i started the natural series by jennifer lynn barnes and then throughout the month i ended up reading the second one as well so the naturals and then killer instinct is the second one this i do not know why i have not seen this series sooner i read the inheritance games by her and i absolutely loved it but i think that this series i love even more the characters in here the storyline that this is what i love in a ya little series this is basically like a ya criminal minds if you've heard about this series that's definitely how it's been described to you but five different teenagers and they all have different skill sets that help the fbi on kind of like cases two of them are profilers one can read emotions one can lie detect one is like really statistical in her brain it's very interesting they're all so different they all have very like traumatic backgrounds but they all bond over this in a way it's like a found family together and they're so interesting together and then you also get like the fbi agents the people around them the side characters that are just like so amazing like i'm obsessed and then obviously you get the cases the fbi world and all that mixed together with like a little bit of a romance subplot and all of these is just like so good her writing is just i've never read such fast-paced writing before like in my life like it's so so fast-paced so quick you can just binge this series if you wanted to and it's so entertaining i love all of them i think i gave this one four and this one 4.5 this one you kind of just obviously get to know the characters once you finish this one and get into this one you know the characters you know their stories you know a little bit of their backgrounds and it's kind of just progressing and it just gets better and better like i loved this one so much and i'm just obsessed with this series and then i read the summer of broken rules by kl wather so this one is a little ya romance I did read this a few years ago, but it was our book club book of the month So I wanted to reread it especially in the summertime It just felt like the perfect book to reread if I wanted to and it was so fast-paced I read this in a day. It's basically about Meredith who lost her sister a few years ago And she's still mourning the loss of her sister But every year her family takes a little trip to Martha's Vineyard and they haven't gone in a few years because of her sister's passing But they end up going this year because her cousin is getting married So the whole family goes and on Martha's Vineyard just think of the aesthetic of like a New England summer Like they have all these houses they are on the beach It's like that summer vibe which I think is like the perfect setting and aesthetic for like a summer read i don't know why it just hits so hard for me and when they get there they have this like family game that they play called assassin and basically just like a water gun game and you have like a target to get so you have like the mix of the grief and the mourning of the sisters still and all the family getting together again but you also have like this fun upbeat game that they're playing and the mix of that feels very weird to put together but the way that it's written i think it's very interesting it's done like really well romance in here is very insta lovey and it's very like fast because she's only there for a week progresses really fast and it's just again perfect summer book to binge i gave this four stars i think the first time i read it i gave it three I didn't connect with it. I feel like she threw a lot of characters at you at first, but reading it a second time, I could connect more because I kind of knew what was happening. And I just thought the story is just so sweet. And then I finally, finally, finally read The Final Offer by Lauren Asher. This has been on my TBR since it came out, the month that it came out. It's been months. And every month on my TBR list, I'm like, guys, I'm reading this. And you know what I never do? 
I never read it but I did this month. This one is the final book in the Dreamland Billionaire series by Lauren Asher, and this is about three brothers and their point of views and their romantic interest. And basically their grandfather passed away and left them all tasks to complete in the will to get like their inheritance. And the grandfather kind of owned this almost Disneyland type place. So all of their tasks to do kind of have something to do with that, whatever. So Cal's task has something to do with the house that they grew up in, but living in that house is his ex-girlfriend from years ago and her daughter. Cal comes back years later after they've broken up and gone through some stuff and they grew up together so it's kind of like childhood friends to lovers they broke up he's back she's like why are you back and you kind of get glimpses of what happened back in the day between them and you get them slowly like being in each other's space again and I, this one was my favorite out of the three of them I think because one it has my favorite tropes in it but this one had so much depth to it so much character development so much emotion to it I gave this one 4.25 stars I was obsessed with Cal with Lana with the daughter like even the daughter was just so cute and all of them together I just feel like they had such this family aspect it was so sweet to see but them separately they had their own things like that they had to go through like Cal especially just seeing his point of view and seeing the struggles he's been through and kind of just getting that point of view it just had so much depth to it this book is so long and that was like one of the main reasons I was putting it off but then once you understand the story and what they have to go through to get to the end it's like you can't just have a 300 page book like you need all of this information and all of this character development and growth throughout the story and it was just I loved this so 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 much. This is my favorite out of three. So good. I'm so happy I finally read it. Okay, and then on my Kindle, I read a Frida McFadden book called Word D. I think this was her most recent release. I think she's coming out with another one. I'm not too sure, but I ended up giving this one 3.75 stars. Kind of just started it and read it for the 24 hour readathon and I binged it. And I feel like if you ever need a mystery thriller or just a book to absolutely binge and just kind of like be on the edge of your seat, Frida McFadden's books are perfect for that. It doesn't matter if the story's not like the best story in the world. Like her writing just gets right into it, which I appreciate so much. Like you don't get any backstory, you get right into the story. You get right into the characters, right into the problem, and right into like the suspense and like weirdness that's going on. Ward D is basically about this woman who I think she's studying to become a doctor, but she has to spend the night in a ward with like psychiatric patients. She has to spend overnight in there with a doctor, all the patients, and she kind of has to do this like study or almost like I don't really know why she's in there. I forgot, but like that's what she has to do. So, and you get that timeline, and then you get a past timeline of her in high school and like her and her best friend and like things that happened back then, and it kind of all connects in a way. It wasn't my favorite from her. I think there were some things that were kind of off with it but again it was so fast-paced so entertaining the plot twist got me that's all I needed from it that's what I wanted to get out of it I wanted a fast-paced book that I could just read in a few hours and finish and she delivered with that but again just not my favorite by her okay and then I read The Grace Year by Kim Lidget Lidget not too sure but that's when I gave three stars and I want to say just because I give a book three stars doesn't mean it's a bad book I just didn't live up to either the expectations I had for it it was just kind of like a mid book I kind of like didn't connect to it but it wasn't bad do you know what I mean it's just mid whatever but this one is a dystopian novel and I appreciate appreciated so much this was actually a standalone so I didn't have to get into a series but about this world and society where when girls turn I think it's 16 for their 16th year they're kind of banished from the county that they live in and they're either courted to be married when they come back or not and once all of them go off to wherever they take them for that year you may not make it back so you get in the main character's point of view her year there and like what's going on and all this like weird stuff I don't know there's like this message between it about like women in the society and like there's definitely like deeper meanings throughout the story and I do think that it was a little bit weird getting into because the men look at women in this book as objects and it's just like so icky to read about but it's just not my favorite book. I don't know if it was the story or the writing or like the pacing of it. It just like fell flat for me and there's like this one plot change like halfway through or a little bit over halfway through that I was just like so I don't know I didn't connect with it I guess. It was definitely an entertaining story. I've never read a book like this and the ending I will say I really enjoyed. I feel like that's where like the main like message kind of came through a little bit. That's all I'm gonna say. It was entertaining. It was definitely a book like I've never read before but it's just not my favorite book. Then I read Throttled by Lauren Asher, another Lauren Asher book this month. This one is the Dirty Air series and I feel like I'm so late to the series game like I don't know why. I feel like I've never really had an interest in F1 in race car or anything like that so I never really wanted to read the series but I've heard great things about the series. I like Lauren Asher's writing and I've had this on my bookshelf for so long so I needed to give it a chance eventually. This is basically about Maya whose brother is just not promoted but he's like put on like this higher F1 team and his new teammate is Noah and Noah's like one of the best F1 racers ever and they kind of have this animosity between each other Noah and Maya's brother but you have Maya and Noah kind of interacting with each other having this like physical attraction to each other but they can't really do much about it because again Noah is Maya's brother's teammate and Maya is actually this influencer so she's going around with them on tour like with all their race 
tour dates and whatever like kind of vlogging it and she kind of grows with that little audience so you have that little side plot which is really interesting and really kind of entertaining to read i really love lauren asher's writing it was really fast paced it was kind of just like a no brainer little romance but it wasn't my favorite i ended up giving this three stars because i feel like this was more of like a physical attraction and they were just very much like sexually attracted to each other there wasn't really much like deeper things into the relationship and i feel like my favorite types of relationships are where they grow together emotionally they connect where they like talk and get deep i don't know things like that i like when all the physicalness comes after do i make any sense right now i'm not sure but they're just not my favorite like romantic couple in a book i didn't love the f1 stuff i will say that i don't know if it's because i don't like f1 i've never been like really into the f1 world maybe this will open up the doors to f1 but f1 is such a big can i say f1 again why do i keep saying that racing is such a big plot in this and it was just like sometimes i would have to skim over like the racing of i don't know i didn't really care about the racing that's all and it wasn't my favorite romantic couple i do want to continue the series i want to read all of them because i've heard i think the fourth one is everyone's favorite so i want to get to that eventually and i just want to read the whole series it wasn't bad it was just like a mid little romance book so this point in the month is where i saw a tiktok that recommended this fantasy enemies to lover series and i wasn't in a slump i just didn't know what i wanted to read next and nothing on my like tbr that i had really called my name and i really wanted to read on my kindle it's not like a kindle mood so i saw this tiktok and usually when i see tiktoks like that sometimes i'll download it but i don't like end up reading it right away like i'll download it think about it but that one she really got me she was like really persuasive so i downloaded it started the first one and it's called the lachlan feud series they're all on kindle unlimited there's four books so throughout the month not back to back actually i don't really remember but i ended up reading the three of them which is crazy because when i start a series i don't get through the books but this one i like wanted to read i have the fourth one that i want to read in august so that's completing a whole series for me and that is that doesn't happen but basically the first one is scarlet princess and it's about this princess of lachlan and she and her cousin are going through whatever to pick up something and they get caught in another territory i think it's so karen is like the little part of the country that they're stuck in and that's like their rivals and they get caught there and she's kind of like captured by one of the courts there and she's stuck in like a cell there and she's like i'm a princess and they're like well we can't do anything about this you illegally trespassed into our area and she's kind of held captive there now so in order to like get back to wherever they ha she has to go in front of the whole council of all of the little courts there and they have to decide like what they're going to do with her so you kind of get the journey throughout that and you get her connecting with her captor you get her at the summit which is where they have to go to all talk about what's going to happen to her now it was so good what i loved so much about it is the chapters are so short you don't get backstory right away it gets right into the story like right when you start the book she's getting captured into the other enemies like territory like the world building that does happen it happens like gradually as you're reading the story and you get more background as you go and that's what i love about some fantasy books is when you could just read them get into another world and it's just like it was good so after the first one i did go right into the second one i think which is called tarnished crown and this one was like so so good because a character that you don't like in the first one kind of becomes a prevalent character in the second one and the storyline like completely changes and it was just like not what i expected like the first one ended on such a cliffhanger and i was so excited and the second one was so good first one i gave four stars second one i gave 4.5 and then the third one i read most recently this is called crimson kingdom which i thought was gonna be my favorite and i was so excited because the way that the second one ends you get so much like build up and tension and slow burn throughout the whole second book so when i got to this one i was like okay now we're getting somewhere but this one kind of just felt like an extended epilogue of the second one and i was very bummed about this i feel like this one and the fourth one i'm gonna read probably could be into one book do you know what i mean like this one just felt very dragged out and like the last 50 pages of this though gave me what i wanted ate up absolutely every single last few pages of this book it was what i wanted throughout the whole book it just like took so long to get there i don't know the chapters are short it was very entertaining it's bingeable little series and yeah again they're all on kindle unlimited i want to read the fourth one in august and i'm so excited to do so i want to see how this all ends and how this all i don't know like wraps up i've never heard anyone really talk about this it's by two authors robin d mall and l madison they're also so beautiful look at these covers I love so much. Then I read Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez. This is the third and final book in the Friend Zone little trilogy. You can read them all as standalones. You can read this definitely as a standalone, but the main guy character in here is cousins with the main guy in the Friend Zone, which is the first book. So they all kind of connect with each other, which is very, very fun. I love when that happens and you get the couples from the first one in here in a little scene. But this is about a Vanessa who quit her job from traveling the globe. Like she was a world traveler to take care of her niece. Her sister kind of just left her niece on her doorstep and she's a newborn and now she's kind of thrown into this world of parenting and she is a like travel vlogger like she is a youtuber and that's like her job but she had to kind of quit doing that for a little bit because of taking care of her niece and then her neighbor adrian sees that she's struggling and kind of comes to help her and they kind of just like platonically hang out and he kind of just helps her out a little bit i loved their build up of friendship in this before you got into anything romantically like it was just so nice to see them genuinely wanting to help each other out and like being there for each other it was so nice adrian 
king like top tier he's amazing i say this every time i talk about abby jimenez her writing is so fast-paced if you need a romance book to just sit and binge and just get through really quick like it's just dialogue heavy it gets right into the story which i always say i love so much when books just get right into the plot and like don't give too much background at first and hers is always like you start out with this like meet cute which i always appreciate and it's always like pretty cute then you get to know the characters and there's always something deeper to them i really enjoyed this one i gave this one four stars i didn't love the ending of it i will say but it was good loved it loved the characters loved their story and loved the plot loved the writing four stars. <laughs> then the last book I read in July was The Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand. This one is basically about this woman who lost her husband recently. He got into a car accident around Christmas time so she's grieving her husband and she is this famous cook blogger food blogger she basically like, makes recipes and has this blog and like she's very famous like she has a lot of subscribers on there she's pretty well known she moved away from nantucket but she grew up on nantucket so she saw somewhere that this woman had a five-star weekend where she invited five friends from different phases in her life and she was like this is a great idea like i need to connect again like she's grieving so she invites a best friend from her childhood she invites a best friend from her high school i think and then her college and then her like now present day best friend and then also this woman that she met online on her blog she's never met her before but she invited her to the weekend and now you have all these women through all different phases of her life that don't really know each other i mean some of them know each other but like none of them are really friends all thrown into this nantucket weekend girls weekend together and they're also different you get all their point of views and you get all like the problems in their lives and what they're going through but then you all get all of them together and it's like you kind of see what they're all struggling with and it's very interesting to see like as you grow up you meet all these different people and all these different friends you can see yourself in different phases of your life when you look back on it like i loved the premise of the story you also get her daughter's point of view and her daughter is a film student i think and her and her mother haven't had a great relationship after her father passed so she tells her daughter to come back and film it the weekend for them so it's like this whole thing whole weekend i ended up giving this one three stars though because i just couldn't connect to the characters i just feel like they were so much older than me and just like the problems that they were going through and like they were talking about and connecting on i just like literally couldn't connect to them they were just all 50 year old women kind of just like going through it and i don't know couldn't connect to them and i feel like some of the characters were just like a little annoying i don't know i just didn't absolutely love it it's not my favorite ellen hunter run book it's definitely a good one i read this on the beach when i was a white and like reading it on the beach was a great setting to read because obviously it takes place on nantucket and it's like a summer weekend but yeah there's also a little plot twisty thing that's going on in here and you're kind of waiting for that to kind of blow up in everyone's faces but i feel like ellen also put a lot of kind of tiktok remarks and like millennial sayings that were just like so cringy and i just don't love reading that in books i don't know it's again just not my favorite from her but it was good i don't know three stars Okay, so those are all of the books that I read in July. I do want to shout out the book club and let you guys know what we're reading for the month of August together. If you guys want to join, the Patreon link is in the description. Come join our book club. There's different tiers you'll see on there if you want to try it out. Whatever you want to do if you're interested. But we are reading Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross this month. This is a five-star read of mine most recently. I'm obsessed with it. I'm so excited. If you want to read this with us, come join us. The link is in the description. Shout out book club besties. And yeah, those are all the books that I read in the month of July. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know your thoughts your opinions if you have any books you want me to read for august let me know literally anything you want down below that's all for me thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you did and i will see you hopefully in the next one bye